As you can see, there is plenty of wasted space behind the chairs and in the corners. This table only seats six, which if you like to entertain, is not nearly enough space. The space without the table and chairs measures approximately 9 feet x 6.5 feet. He starts by removing the quarter round trim to ensure a flush mount against the walls. Starting with the longest wall, a support was attached at the studs. This being an older home, the floor is not totally level, causing the support to look a little off. After the leveled wall support was attached, the seat supports were drilled into place. They were placed approximately 20 from each other. Vertical supports and horizontal floor supports were then added to prevent any flexing of the booth seats. With no studs to anchor into for the sides of the booth, square supports were constructed to hold the weight of future guests. They were then anchored to the floor and screwed into the thin walls wherever they could be. Here is an overview of the seat framework. Notice the heating vent on the back wall that will flow under the seats. This problem will be remedied later. He will be using one half plywood for the booth seats. If you are in need of extra storage space, this would be where you would want to add hinges to utilize the space beneath the seats. To provide an extra cushion, he used to seat foam for the comfort of his guests. This can get quite expensive, so make sure you shop around. Outdoor fabric was used for this project for its durability and stain resistance. You will need to place the fabric first, then the foam with the plywood on top. After that you will stretch the fabric and staple it into place. Make sure that you are liberal with your staples. It's going to be better to have too many, rather than finding out later that you didn't use enough staples. Nobody likes to go back and redo the work that has already been done. The seats are in place and look quite nice. Now the beadboard is cut for the facing of the bench seats. Some cutting needed to be done to fit the beadboard around the window trim. Since you can see the back of the bench through the window, beadboard was also used as a backing for the bench. The hole for the heater vent was measured and cut. Unless you're looking for heated seats, you'll want to purchase some heating duct to extend through the depth of the bench seat. Once the duct has been extended and the cover is in place, the bench is starting to look pretty good. Once the facing and trim are in place, you're almost finished. Any imperfections or mistakes can be caulked or filled at this time. Always remember to measure twice and cut once. It's a terrible thing to have to repurchase materials due to an oversight, but it happens. The bench is now painted white to match the existing trim in the room. You always want to use a couple of coats of paint. In an area that is destined to have spills, you'll want to make sure you choose a paint that is easy to clean. Here is the completed booth with the table that was created for the space. With a little help from his wife, the decoration of the booth is complete. Now this is a much more welcoming place to entertain your guests.